While we are talking about qubits, uh, let me just perhaps address one thing that is, um, I think, quite often misunderstood. And that is, why do we need actually qubits? Why do we need chunks? Why do we need subsystems in order to do information processing? Uh, why can't we just encode everything into one chunk, say into one harmonic oscillator or one into, into the energy levels of a hydrogen atom and just perform operation there? So the, the, this is actually where the notion of efficiency of your data encoding comes in. So imagine, for example, that we have uh, n qubits again. So this is my favorite diagram for a qubit. So we have n of them say two-level atoms, spin half, whatever, whatever two-level systems you can think of, choose your favorite, play with it. Now, um, so whenever we have n of them, of course, we have two to the n different configurations, right? So these are, for example, so this is in state zero, this is in state one, and whatever it is there in between and the state one. So we write this as zero and another one in state one and another one in whatever and then finally the last one in state one. Now this symbol here is a symbol for a tensor product that you will see in a moment or it will be explained, we'll talk about tensor products in a moment but uh, just think about it as a convenient symbol for representing subsystems. So I have one qubit and uh, tensor another qubit. For tensor you may think, okay, add another qubit and add another qubit and add another qubit. Quite often we simplify this notation and uh, just drop the tensor product symbols and write it as 0, 1, all the way to 1. And when it comes to the basis states, we even simplify it further every now and then, not all the time, and we write it as 0, 1, so we drop all those brackets in between, and we write it like this. So it, just, it will be 1. Okay, so the, the thing is that uh, altogether there are 2 to the n configurations, so there are 2 to the n basis states, for n qubits. So mathematically speaking, they live in the, in the Hilbert space of dimension 2 to the n. But when you play with them, so when you, when you can, assuming that you can address each qubit separately, so you can, say, take a laser and shine on this qubit and change it, so let it flip it from 0 to 1, and the same for this one and the same for this one, which is actually what physicists can do. You can put n ions into an ion trap and shoot a laser at every single one of them and control every single one of them. So, but you see, you need at most n operations to explore all possible basis states, right? So you can just go to every single qubit and put it either in zero or one, at most n operations, and with n operations you can explore the whole configuration space of 2 to the n different configurations. So you have n operations. So now imagine a situation where, for example, you have just one chunk. Instead of subsystems like qubits, you, just, you take one system that, say, a harmonic oscillator. So let me just draw a potential of a harmonic oscillator. So it has energy levels that you would like to use now as your basis states. And you can, of course, you know, you can say, well, nothing prevents me from labeling this one as 0, 0, 0. Say this one could be, you know, 1, 0, and so on and so forth. And then you have one at the top of this energy ladder, which is 1, 1, all ones. So you have 2 to the n different states that you picked up and you may say well now I just play with a laser light or whatever the control I have over this system and I can just move from this to this one or uh, any other in fact and that is like computation right 
Well, yes, it is like computation if you have this labeling, except that the use of physical resources in this case will grow exponentially with uh, the size of your input. If you have n bits, logically speaking, here, you still have to have those 2 to the n states. And like, for example, in a harmonic oscillator, each of them is separated by fixed energy levels. You see that in order to go, say, from the ground state to the most excited state, so from state 0 to the one that denotes 2 to the n, you have to, your, your energy expenditure grows exponentially with the size of the logical qubit. So you have, you have one issue. And of course, you know, even constructing the algorithm in terms of what kind of sequence of pulses should be used will be actually also quite complicated, maybe exponentially complicated. So in this case, you, can, you have an issue with energy. It just simply doesn't work. At some point, you have to use the, the enormous amount of energy if, because it will go like 2 to the n if you want to do or simulate computation on n logical qubits. In contrast, compare. Here at the most, if, if we have the energy separation between those two energy levels in two level, in, in two level atoms is whatever, you know, choose a unit E, then it's going to be n times E. So it's, it's linear with the maximum energy separation in each of the subsystems. But then you may say, fine, you know, if energy is your concern, I can, I can pick up a system where um, there is a finite energy bound. So you may, you may take a potential of, say, some molecule or, or, or an atom where you say, well, there's a ground state, which I can label 0, 0, whatever, 0. And then there will be a state very close to ionization level, which you can label as 1, 1, 1. So again, you have 2 to the n states. But at this point, you don't have an issue with the energy because you say, well, there's a finite energy gap, so I don't have to spend more than this, whatever is ionization energy in this particular system in order to do the computations. Well, that's certainly true, but if you want to squeeze 2 to the n states into this energy gap, so you can see at some point uh, it, it may just look like this. There will be an enormous congestion of those energy levels here. And the energy separation at some point will just go like 1 over 2 to the n. So that means that you will have to operate with a precision that goes like 1 over 2 to the n. So with exponential precision, which is also not good because, well, think about it. If you want to have energy specify with such a precision and, and, and you are using lasers, for example, to tune to resonant frequency, then to have a frequency defined with such a precision, the length of your pulse has to grow exponentially longer and longer and longer, which will affect uh, the computational step. So to cut the long story short, one can, you know, one can go through all kinds of arguments, but essentially this kind of encoding, which is called unary encoding, is no good. It's just not efficient. So you have to have subsystems in order to be able to explore the exponential number of configuration using only a linear number of operations. You simply address each subsystem separately and then you are done. So we will have to play with subsystems and we'll be playing with quantum bits, the simplest possible subsystem with qubits, and we will be constructing um, wonderful unitary operations as you will see that it will have some computational meaning.